So in today's tutorial, I want to show how you can recover a AppSigner wallet on your cold card. Um, and I'll do this in Sparrow Wallet. So, um, you know, you can use a tap signer uh, in a lot of different ways. I think, you know, my favorite way to use this is to have like an on the go um, cold wallet, right? So you can set this up with Nunchuck, and um, every time you want to spend, you have to, you know, this, this comes in a, you know, a sleeve that allows you to carry it around without worrying about someone you know basically stealing your funds but every time you want to spend you have to pull this out and then tap it on your phone right um these are also you know pretty nifty uh to have for different multi-sig setups and that kind of thing um, but regardless let's say you have one set up and you just want to make sure that um you know if this were ever to get lost or if it were to ever break somehow um, that you'd be able to recover your funds. Okay. So I'm going to show you how to do that today. Um, the first thing I want to show is how to download the files that you're going to need for the recovery. Um, these files should just be stored, you know, wherever you store important things. So toss it on an SD card, um, you know, put it in your safe. You could store it on your iCloud. You know, anywhere where you think you can store this and you'll have access to it later, just in case you need to recover your wallet, that's where you'd want to store it. Um, so what we're going to do to get that file is um, I'm going to go to the wallet that I've already set up in Nunchuck. Okay. You can see I have my tap signer as one of my keys, and then I've set up a tap signer um, wallet. And this is in testnet, by the way, but, um, you know, it'll work the same exact way even if you're in mainnet. Um, I'm going to plug in my SD card reader into my phone. Okay. And what we're going to do is we're going to go into the tap signer wallet that we've set up. Uh, we're going to go to view wallet config. Okay. Um, and the first thing I want to do is I want to export the, the wallet configuration. The reason I want to do this is just to get the um, master fingerprint as well as the derivation path of this wallet, just so that we can be sure we're importing the correct wallet um, into Sparrow, you know, in a bit. So I'll do this, export that wallet. I'll do the BSMS version. Now here, I'm going to plug in my SD card. Okay. And once that's plugged in, I'll go down to save to files. All right. And it's, it already opened automatically in the SD card, but if it didn't do that, sometimes it will open, you know, in this screen or sometimes it'll even open in your iCloud drive. You just have to go back to browse and then, um, click on, you know, SD card in your locations. Okay. So in here, I'll save that file. That's the first thing I'll do. And I'll X out of this now. Um, and I will X out of this wallet. One thing I just want to show real quick, just so that another, you know, check <laughs> that we can, uh, that we can make when we import this into Sparrow is I'll, I'll show you the UTXOs we're dealing with here. So we're, we have three separate UTXOs, a 1 million sat, 2 millions and a 5 million sat UTXO, right? Um, so just, you know, keep that in mind for when we import it, just to make sure we're dealing with the same wallet in Sparrow. So I'm going to go back and the other thing I want to do is I want to get the backup file for the tap signer itself. So I'm going to go into keys. Okay. And then up here, I'll click on the three dots again. And now one of the options is backup key. Okay. So I'm going to click on backup key. It's going to ask me for my tap signer pin, which, you know, in this case is one, two, three, four, five, six. Never give your pin away, but this is, you know, a tutorial. So I'm just showing you how to do this. Click confirm. And now it's going to ask you to tap your tap signer. Okay, so there you go. And then again, save to files and I'll save it on my SD card. Okay. 
So that's all set now. Um, we're all set with Nunchuck. So I'm going to close that out. I'm just going to show you real quick um, on the SD card. Okay. The uh, we have the backup file, um, the backup file right here, and then we have that um, wallet configuration file. If I look at that wallet configuration file, um, you can see how it has. So the first, uh, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight characters. That's the master fingerprint, and then after that, it shows you the derivation path. Okay, um, and what I've done is I've I've written that down right there just for safekeeping okay um so that's just to show you that and so now we can exit out of that and take out our sd card okay and we're all set with the phone now so i'll go ahead and take that turn that off um the one other thing that you should have is the backup password so it's this string of um, 32 characters all right um, this is the backup password. So you're going to need this as well um, to recover the tap signer on your cold card. You're going to need your backup file and your backup password. Those are the two pieces you need. So we just downloaded the backup file on the SD card. And I've also written down that backup password here as well for safekeeping, right? Just in case we were to ever lose our tap signer, we have to make sure we have a backup of that backup password. So Definitely make sure you write that down, keep that safe. Um, you know, uh, you could even stamp this in metal if you wanted to. If you, you know, if you're storing serious amounts of Bitcoin with this, um, you might want to back it up in a, in a, in a way that's uh, even more robust than a piece of paper. But for now, you know, I just have it written down here um, as my backup. Okay, so now the next step is to import this tap signer wallet um well actually the tap signer uh private key as a temporary key in our cold card um, one thing to note is when you are doing this on your cold card uh, you have to make sure that you're running a firmware version that's fairly new um, i'm running the newest one 5.2.2 um, but you know if you're if you're running an older firmware this feature might not be available to you um, so you might want to, you know, consider upgrading to a a relatively new firmware version um, if you want to do this on your cold card. Okay. All right. But what we do on the cold card, we'll start by I'll um, put this SD card in. Okay. And then on the cold card, what we do is we go down to Advanced Tools, and then in Advanced Tools, we go down to temporary seed, okay? And now it's gonna tell you that the, um, the temporary seed, you know, is going to basically delete from the device once you turn it off, okay? So make sure that this isn't something you need on your cold card forever, because it will get deleted as soon as you unplug it. So you're gonna press four to prove that you read that. Um, and now we have some options here, and you can see the fourth option is tap signer backup. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and click on that, and now it's gonna ask you know to insert your SD card and make sure the file's on there, uh, which I already have, and then you can see that's the file, right? I don't know if you can see that. There you go. So that's the backup file that we just saved from Nunchuck. I'll press check on there. And now it's going to ask you to enter in that backup password off of your tap signer. So I'll press X or uh, uh, check. And here's where we enter in the 32 characters. All right. Um, to enter it in, you can cycle through the characters like this, um, cycle forwards or backwards. Um, but it goes from zero to nine, right? And then it goes through A through F. Okay. So go ahead and enter 32 characters. Um, this is probably gonna take me a little bit, so I will uh, speed this part up. One thing to note, if you mess this part up, um, <laughs> it's going to fail and then it's gonna make you start all over. So really make sure that you're entering this in correctly. Otherwise, you know, it's gonna be very frustrating when you have to enter it in, you know, over and over again. Um, so 
Let me just do this real quick. All right, so I've entered that in. Um, it starts, you know, at the top here, right? And then it wraps around to the bottom. Um, another kind of, you know, uh, nice thing to do when you are writing down your backup password is if you write it down in groups of four, that will make it a lot easier to enter it in um, when you're entering it in on your cold card. And then of course, you know, if you've got the cold card queue, <laughs> that'll make entering this in a hell of a lot easier. Um, but, you know, I'm still waiting on that to come in. So I'm stuck with my Mark IV for now. Um, but anyways, once you've got it entered in, you can go ahead and press check. Okay. And that's going to now load in this uh, temporary master key. All right. And we can double check that um, master fingerprint just to make sure that it matches. And it does. So we have the correct master key entered in. Okay. So now that we've got the master key entered in, you can see it, it's at the top there, right? And that means that it's a temporary seed. First thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make sure that um, I'm still in test net, right? I don't wanna be in main net right now. So I wanna make sure that my cold card's in test net. Um, so to do that, I have to go to the danger zone under the uh, advanced tools. And here I go down and you can see test net mode was turned off. So make sure you turn that back on if you're doing things in testnet. Otherwise, you can skip this step. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and turn it on testnet. Okay, so now testnet mode is on. And I'll exit back out to the main menu. Um, so now here we have to uh, export this wallet so that we can load it into Sparrow. Okay. So I'll go to advanced tools export wallet and now I'll just go to the second option here which is Sparrow wallet okay this is gonna save a JSON file to the SD card and there we go so it's gonna save it as Sparrow-export.json all right so I press check and then I can X back out back to the main menu and I'm gonna pop the SD card out and we're all set with the cold card now, so now the final step is loading this wallet into Sparrow Wallet. This is similar to how you would load a, a, any other, you know, cold card wallet into Sparrow. So this may you know, already be very familiar to a lot of you, but to those of you who haven't done this yet, what you do is you're gonna pop in the SD card into your computer, and then on Sparrow, um, you're going to go to File, Click on new wallet. Here I will call this tap signer um, recovery. Okay. Create wallet. And now here I'm going to do an air gapped hardware wallet. I'm going to click on import file under cold card. Okay. And then here is that sparrow dash, dash export.json file that we just saved. Okay, so I'll open that. All right, and there we have it. So, um, you know, it's a, like how we saw on the cold card, um, we have the same master fingerprint, okay? And then uh, we also have the same derivation path that we had written down as well. So the standard derivation path for a testnet um, native SegWit wallet. All right, so everything looks good. We'll click apply. Uh, we won't give it a password. And now if we go to transactions, um, we can see that you know, it's the same balance. If we go to the UTXOs, we can see those are the three UTXOs that we had, you know, earlier on. So there you go. So now we have, um, you know, basically a, uh, a recovered version of this wallet on Sparrow. Um, we have the master keys temporarily in the cold card. So if we wanted to, for example, sweep the funds from this wallet, we could send them, you know, to, to one of our other wallets. Um, and then we could sign that transaction using our cold card, as long as those uh, private keys are temporarily stored on the cold card. 
So there you go, you know, pretty straightforward, um, especially if you're already used to using the cold card, you know, all the steps after you've gotten the temporary key into the cold card are all exactly the same as how you would, you know, be used to using it um, as just a normal cold card with your Sparrow wallet. So I hope that, uh, you know, helped show you how to recover your tap signer. Um, and if you have any uh, uh, questions or um, any issues you run into, you know, feel free to reach out on Twitter or uh, leave a comment on this, on this uh, video. All right. Thanks for watching. Bye.